Oh, what a mess. Not sure if this is showing up on uh, camera well or not. And I'm just guessing this is probably the uh, low voltage contacts that would uh, go back to the primary and then the uh, secondary or the uh, B plus side more than likely is here and the only reason I'm saying that it looks like there's some uh, burn marks more oxidation here on this side discoloring also my gaps uh, between the two contact points there's more on this side just visually looking at it versus this side here as I mentioned I'm not sure what's going on here with the uh, rubbery type material it almost looks like water or oil just look at this it's just goo and I would have to believe that that would be causing some uh, resistance as well or maybe a uh, part of my problem with the uh, voltage itself maybe not totally associated with the contact points themselves but maybe a DC resistance here uh, from this wet gooey material here you can see I've got my uh, VOL mount and what I'm going to do if you look at the picture in picture you'll see pins number two and four which will be here this is pin one pin two three four so two and four should tie back into the uh, high voltage side of the uh, synchronous vibrator so uh, let's see if we can identify the uh, contacts for the uh, high voltage side here. And I'm not sure what this uh, gooey substance is, but man, it is sticky and it's all over the top of the uh, coil here uh, for the reed switch as well. We'll start here with uh, pin number two. meter set and uh, let's just check it should be these outside connection points here so no resistance there no resistance there so what I'm assuming this is the uh, low voltage side or what attaches to the uh, primary we'll confirm that here in just a moment flip this thing over see what I'm talking about working with this just a nasty mess okay and I have uh, DC resistance here and nothing on this side so my assumptions are that uh, pin number two attaches uh, back to this uh, contact point right here you can see I've got some DC resistance between those points but it may just be oxidation here itself on the metal still at point 8 ohms let's move this over to uh, pin number 4 and see if we have um, continuity here or does it use the other side okay pin number four so you can see this is our high voltage or what would be the rectified output of the uh, vibrator 
this location here, this location here, pin number four, pin number two. Let me uh, make myself a uh, hand drawing and try to identify. I'll probably just mark up the uh, coil. Put a dot or something on it just to signify the uh, high voltage side. Okay, looking at the uh, schematic there again in the uh, picture in picture, you can see the uh, primary leads attached to uh, pins number one and number five. So this will be pin number one. Let's start here. And let me go to this side just to make sure. And you can see I've got some uh, DC resistance measurements here where the uh, primary side shows a uh, path uh, to the other side. So about 7.2 meg. I'm not sure if that's being caused by the uh, contact points themselves where I've got oxidation or contact here in between or if it has to do with this uh, goo here that we're dealing with. It's about one ohm. All right, and I should be able to move over to pin number five. One, two, three, four, number five. Now we should see a DC resistance back over to this point. And as I mentioned earlier, I can still see DC resistance here between the uh, two primary contact point locations. So 0 0.6, 0 0.5 ohms, that's a little bit better. And here again you can see the uh, trouble spot that we have around uh, 8 mag or so DC resistance between those two points. And uh, let me just move this closer so you guys can see. It's going to this point here. Here's the uh, coil itself. You'll see that called out on the schematic. And the uh, reed switch itself with like a counterweight on this side. We've already checked the uh, vibrator in an earlier video just to make sure the coil itself was good. And we know the coil's good because we're able to see the uh, vibrator actually move back and forth even though it's in uh, intermittent in nature. Let me uh, take a look at those DC resistance readings again. And that will be uh, pin number three is the uh, voltage input, the six volt input. So one, two, three. And number six here. would kind of close the loop. Okay, about 13 ohms or so. And if I also go back here to uh, pin number 6, I should read continuity back to this center point here. And you can see that I do. And there's some DC resistance or a path across the other contacts, which should uh, read open, which is uh, problematic. Flip this over. Center point reads uh, 0.6 ohms. 
and see what resistance we have here. And you can see we've got a little bit of a path there as well. And my assumptions are it's the uh, contact closure between the points or just oxidation built up between the contacts over time. Or this uh, gooey substance here. Alright, since I've got everything documented uh, well enough, I think I'm going to just go ahead and get my screwdriver here and just pry this gooey mess out. I'll continue to do this nasty job off camera, but one would think that uh, this material being as wet as it appears to be would also be compromising the uh, performance of the uh, vibrator itself. Okay folks, that's the amount of uh, goo that was uh, inside here. The bigger chunks. And you can see the uh, connection points here back to the uh, bottom side. I'm still finding pieces. But as wet as that material is, I can only imagine it would be conductive. And uh, that's the lead wire dressing itself between the uh, terminal points here on the uh, mechanical synchronous vibrator back to the uh, tube socket itself. I think uh, what I'm going to do is uh, do a little bit more cleaning here. Real quick, I just want to uh, double check myself before I snip these lead wires here. So uh, pin number two. And that matches my uh, documentation here. We'll go over to pin number four. Go to pin number uh, one. And lastly, pin number five. to uh, kind of chip away at this area, not to uh, damage any of what I believe to be uh, mica pieces in between uh, some other uh, spacers. Okay guys, a little time and effort here, uh, about an hour or more. I think I got this thing uh, cleaned up pretty well looks uh, much better than it did to start out with all that uh, wet tar like material I was able to use alcohol and soak this lower half of the uh, synchronous vibrator in it for uh, about 30 minutes or so and then I used a uh, pick an acid brush and uh, just kept scrubbing away You'll notice uh, here at the top, the area that had the other sticky substance, I've uh, coated the top and the sides with uh, gaffer tape. That's the uh, same tape that I used fixing that output transformer. No adjustments yet to the uh, contact points. Just a quick visual. I can tell that um, on one side, I think this right side here, I'm just a little tighter, even though it's not shorted than the left side. So we'll do some adjustments on that. Anyway, let's compare our uh, DC resistance measurements real quick to what we had before. It was also, you know, nice and grungy. Same exercise there, just scraped away everything. 
cleaned it up and uh, desoldered the uh, leads. So looks like new money. This will be my uh, ground location. And we'll start back over here at this connection point here, which should be, I think, pin number five. And uh, let's just make sure we don't show any resistance now. And we don't. Either side here, if we go back to uh, pin one, same situation. You guys recall before, I had about 8 meg of DC resistance here between ground and uh, this location. Let me uh, just flip it over right now. We'll check the other side. And you can see we're also open there. Do we want to see? And of course this center location is uh, ground. Alright, let's um, look at our documentation here. This is the uh, one that has the uh, lead coming out for the uh, transformer. It drives the uh, magnet here for the uh, reed switch creates the magnetic field that is. So if I'm looking back at my doc documentation correctly, this should be pin number five. Here. And of course that ties back into this side of the uh, switch. And uh, you can see I'm um, uh, 0.1, 0.2 ohms. Let's see if I can get a good connection here on that. Okay, right at point 0.1 to 0. And before, looking back at my notes, I was point 0.6, point 0.5. So big improvement there. We go over to uh, pin number 1, which will be this location. Same drill. I want to check right here. And you can see there, um, which perfect point zero. Uh, before we had anywhere from one ohm to uh, point seven ohms of DC resistance. And I didn't do any type of work inside this area so I think a lot of the uh, DC resistance was coming back from the uh, connection points down here that had saturated themselves in that wet, gooey, whatever it is. Uh, waste product. Alright, let me uh, flip it over here. We'll go back to uh, this side and this will be uh, pin number two when we get it hooked back up. And you can see I'm in great shape here as well. Before I was reading uh, 0.8 ohms of uh, resistance. And what will be pin number four here? Great shape there as well. Prior 0.7 to 0.8 ohms of DC resistance at that point. So I'm hopeful we'll see an improvement in the uh, performance of the synchronous vibrator. Now if you guys look really really close here. You'll notice the uh, contacts here are not adjusted uh, correctly. And what I'll try to do is um, they're not shorted right now which is a good thing. But you can tell possibly on camera if this is showing up this side's a little tighter than this side. We'll continue the uh, video or the next video will pick up and I'll do some adjustments here.
and try to get the same spacing for uh, both sides. The uh, high voltage side that we're looking at here which attaches to the secondary of the transformer and the other two windings uh, here of the uh, primary of the transformer that it would attach here. And you can see here I've got a bigger gap on this side versus this side as well. We'll shoot for um, about a paper width spacing between the two and do some more measurements just to make sure we're good and then uh, I'll clean them as well. We'll go through that process in the uh, next video. And then what I think I'll do, just to uh, check the uh, performance of the uh, synchronous vibrator before we go to the trouble of trying to uh, get this thing back attached to the uh, tube socket, I'm going to uh, just place it upside down as such. We'll uh, jumper this in to the set and uh, bring it up after we make the adjustments and uh, maybe I can position a camera here where we can take a look at it working and we'll definitely be able to hear it vibrate inside the uh, plastic uh, bottle here and uh, just see if this thing is actually functional before we go forward with that effort of getting this thing back in the can here and you can see the cans nice and clean now as well. Folks, thanks again for watching this uh, Zenith restoration, this old farm radio 4B231. Spending some time here on the uh, synchronous uh, vibrator. I was going to do my best to uh, capture the alignment steps on camera but uh, practically impossible. I was kind of back and forth here with the contacts trying to uh, make certain that they were even as uh, possible and uh, the steps I took was to try to uh, reform this uh, one contact on one side, I don't recall which side it was and uh, apply some pressure back toward the uh, center reed. In addition, just backing off this uh, nut here and adjusting the uh, screw here. I think got things just a little bit closer. The contact points were not um, seized up and there appeared just to be very, very little oxidation, best I could tell. So I simply used uh, some P400 sandpaper on both sides of the uh, contact and then uh, used some uh, electronic cleaner and then uh, shot it with uh, deoxid as well once that dried and then I did a, a visual inspection you can see in the picture in picture there I was trying to show the uh, contacts and I think I've got them uh, fairly close and it's just wide enough here for the uh, paper itself to fit through so I think what I'm going to do is um, I'm going to just recheck my uh, DC resistance one more time. I don't expect there to be any changes, but I'll uh, double check. We'll use this as a temporary holder. And then uh, I'm going to get the uh, radio back over here. And we'll try using the uh, vibrator now the synchronous vibrator and just see if it um, actually works so we can uh, determine our next steps. You guys can see I'm uh, jumping everything in here and uh, just taping down the uh, leads here before I uh, jumper those in. Hey 
Okay, folks, a uh, little time consuming here to get everything uh, jumped in and triple check everything just to make sure that I've got the uh, right connection points here. Back to the uh, synchronous vibrator that's in this uh, pill bottle right here. So we'll watch the uh, voltage. And uh, by the way, I went back and uh, checked my uh, 6 volt power supply. Under load, I'm less than uh, 6 volt input. So um, that may have been some of my issues as well. And I think it also leads to my uh, B plus being just a little bit low. In addition, maybe just the uh, aging of the uh, synchronous vibrator as well. We'll be watching uh, B plus here. And again, this thing was just intermittent in nature where it would quit. So. Um, I'll record a few minutes and then I'll uh, bake this in for uh, probably about 30 minutes or so. It showed itself maybe ever uh, five minutes or so it would just shut down and I would have to uh, tap on the can to uh, restore the uh, unit. So let me go ahead and get the uh, DC power supply hooked up here. And you should hear the uh, vibrator here start. I've got the uh, picture in picture here going. Okay, it's uh, humming away. You can hear it. You can see the uh, B plus voltage uh, jumps up, and it should be higher. And I've noticed uh, before to you know rise and then it'll fall back down. All right, let me turn that down so we don't get in trouble here. All right, that's a uh, good sign. I had to go back and look at my B plus before. I don't think that's really much different, but the uh, thing is the uh, vibrator's running and it's not seizing up, so that's a good sign. I've got a problem too with this volume control and the on off switch as well. So that's something I'm going to have to spend more time on. But uh, let me let this thing run here just for a few more minutes and make sure that my uh, voltage stays right here close to uh, 90 volts DC. Just make sure that we're, uh, we're good and steady. And then I'm going to go back and recheck my uh, DC input voltage here again with another meter. I'll report back on that in just a moment. Okay guys, some, uh, right at 10 minutes has passed and this thing is still uh, humming away here. I think I'm going to go ahead and let this run for another 15-20 uh, minutes and then I'll uh, unwire everything. And as I mentioned just a moment ago, we'll move along to uh, our next step here. Okay guys, you can see I've got everything uh, tore back apart. And uh, it was good that this thing's uh, working, even though it's uh, not in perfect order, but uh, that may be due to my input voltage. Anyway, I need to create a base for the synchronous vibrator here to rest on. And you can see that other one had deteriorated over time. 